Hi YouTube, how's everybody doing? I'm okay, a little chilly. I went out um, working today. I'm getting a spot ready for my um, chickens, chicken coop. I'm gonna put it inside my horse's lean-to so they can stay together. They hang together all day as it is. So I thought about, I think I told you I was gonna separate them and put Chicky closer to the house, but it's like, well, they just love each other, so, excuse me. Um, oh, I thought it was funny the other day, uh, 007 eating Mentos. I, I think that's crazy that, you know, we would have the same candies all over the world. When my son Luke was, Lucas was um, young, he loved Mentos. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, he probably still does. I haven't talked to him for ages, but yeah and but anyway that was oh funny that you were chewing on them and people would you know get down on you like you're rude or something you know and because you had something on your mind so what you know i almost got on here i was gonna take like some um like pretzels or something go you know just a like shout out for you the heck with them <laughs> so like uh the people like you and Andrea, people that I consider um, my closest friends um, on YouTube, well, anywhere, actually, <laughs> um, uh, basically are telling all the trolls to take a hike, you know, and that's just funny, funny. I mean, because it is true. I'd rather have, like, one absolutely marvelous friend than a gazillion, you know, so, yeah. So I was thinking today about, um, still about that cannibalism stuff, you know, um, being that literally the feminine is depicted by like, say the vegetation and the male, like the, the, um, meat. And if you think of it like, I'm the salad, you're the steak, you know, for us girls, you know, that's, uh, so like being thankful for my food is something like I always am. I always ask God, um, like if I forget to tell you, thank you for your energy that you give me, you know, and, um, I just thought I'd pass that on to everybody because it is important, you know. Then I was uh, watching a call for an uprising. I remember about a half year ago, he had mentioned this one channel called Queer Stuff for Kids. Um, teaching their target area is three to five year olds. Telling them what it's like to be homosexual or transsexual. And that everybody's got a little queer in them. It's like, no. Not everybody, maybe everybody they know, you know, but yeah, call for an uprising. He was just roaring mad. He couldn't even, he usually says, um, hi to everybody, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's show. But he was screaming before he could even get welcome today's show out, <laughs> you know, cause they're up to their antics and stuff and. I literally forgot they were on YouTube, but, you know, having grandkids, having little kids in your life or whatever age, I guess, you know, is, um, it's a concern, you know, if it was natural, well, I'm not going to even get in there or go there. I have my beliefs as, as a, um, person with morals and integrity, and I know when I do something wrong when God says what's up in my heart and so do these people they just ignore it they push it down you know so they know it's just like I get so sick of people saying you know that for for the awake people and whatever I couldn't stress enough how awake everybody is you know they're make it's decision making time people and then, uh, oh, like Lionel, he was even talking about, uh, 
digital currency coming up and he believes that that's going to be the case and a lot of people do and so do I and I'm wondering geez what's everybody going to do maybe some people will be okay maybe some people won't be you know so yeah it's a concern it is there's a lot of concerns in this world you know but yeah Cool, Andrea, making um, bucks today. Good sales. Neat. Not sure what industry you're in, but I've done sales before, so anytime you can do that successfully, good on you, you know. <laughs> Pretty cool. You don't have to tell me, lady. I understand. Oh, and the thing about tripping on the coffee table when you change your house around, um, you should invest in some uh, uh, cacti, especially like a cathedral cactus. They are wicked. If somebody tried to crawl in my window, they would not be happy. My plants would get them. And then, then my one cat, he's not like a normal cat. He's got some bobcat in him. He's pretty pretty crazy guy so if my horse don't get you outside so yeah I got a lot of protection even my dog um I think if she got scared enough she'd probably bite but no nah, I don't know I don't, I'm not sure about that but I don't know she sees her kitty Bathsheba um that's the dog's cat too her best friend I think if she she sees she be um, Bob fighting. She'll get in between there. But then again, too, if I'm reprimanding Lady, Bob used to come up and smack her in the nose. You know, I'm like, you stop that. You know, it's like two parents reprimanding the same child at the same time. Jeez, we only need one, you know, that type of thing. That's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, anyway, oh, very cold day again, kind of. I started a bonfire for my animals out there, and they enjoyed that. Actually, it's cleaning up the yard, too, from the first, um, in the middle of winter when the chicken came, I had to make a makeshift house. Um, and so I used a bunch of um, wood that I had, too, to kind of insulate it with some rubber mats that I had and I kind of made her like a little igloo. So I took all that wood and burnt it and stacked up the mats and moved some stuff and yeah. So yeah, it was a pretty good day. So anyway, uh, let's see what else is new. Uh, Oh, every once in a while, like when I'm shutting off my TV, it'll go back to regular programming. It's like, like even this morning with the weather I was watching, which I haven't for a long time, unless it was the weather channel. But I, and sometimes it doesn't come in anyway. Um, being out in the country, it's like, yeah, hit and miss. So that's one reason why I wanted internet too in high speed was because of the reception out here so yeah but anyway so um that was disturbing <laughs> it always is it's like last night i shut or before i shut my tv off i um let it go on to whatever program it was on and some kind of movie and i'm thinking yeah all these people say they don't watch mainstream television you know but they go to the movies and they know all the new, like Avenger this and Deadpool, whatever. And I have no idea. Even um, um, these vampire baloney things, you know. I stopped with Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. That's about when I <laughs> quit. Long time ago. But, um, yeah. But they don't watch TV, but they know all the new movies going on, you know, <laughs> so, and all the new series of everything, you know, and now 
I can't get the X Files in my room, but if I could, I would watch that. That's a good show. The the new ones, I guess they're or no, there was new ones last year. I watched them. Um, or the year before. But yeah, now that I would watch. Let's see, is there anything else I'd watch? There goes another one of them white things. I have no idea. Angels. <laughs> Never know. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. So I think tomorrow I'm going to, um, I have the, I have a saddle and a dog house and some other things in my horse's area that I'm going to put in one of our, um, oh, we got a box truck and another, uh, oh, it's a mailman truck, actually, a postal wagon that an old timer had and used to sell honey out of it. And it has a bee and a um, hive and stuff on there. It literally was called a honey wagon. And it's all aluminum, so it will never rot or anything. So I've got storage in there. So like um, my bike from when I was a kid, and it's like about, it's a Schwinn. It's worth um, literally about, well, last I checked, about 18 grand mint condition. And all it has is a tiny little mark on a fender that Doug put on it. And I almost went crazy. Because I used to put my bike even in my room. I would wash it. And um, it was spotless. And then I'd take it in my room and shine it up and wax it. And, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I babied that thing. It's gold. It's a real beautiful bike. So, one time I did. Um, oh, there's one scratch on it, too. But it's not noticeable. It's on the handlebars. I um, hit some sand and scraped my elbow all the way. You can probably still see the mark. It's right there. And um, my whole side of my leg. Another time I hit a parked car. I don't know what the hell was going on with me. But um, I broke all my toes and tore off a whole bunch of toenails on my right foot and hit a parked car and um in the spokes barefoot and my poor neighbor lady come running out she was just freaking and so i had to pull myself together i told her i'm okay and she's like are you sure and i'm like hobbling home you know <laughs> so, that was pretty terrible i might have been going no handed that could have been it and i think i hit like a bump or something like that and another time, I was going down this really big hill and really fast. I had a speedometer, too. I don't remember how fast I was going. Maybe about 38. Um, could have been fast, but I hit the curb and I couldn't stop quick enough. And I hit the curb because it's a five-speed. It didn't have the, like, manual brakes, you know, hand brakes. And... Um, flew over the handlebars right into an oak tree. It's like, wow. I hit another tree when I was skiing one time. I hit a patch of ice and I just hit a tree um, square on. And another time when I was skiing, I was going so fast, probably about 70. And this is no kidding. And I hit one hill. And totally sailed about 30 foot arch. I was freaking and I knew I had to land that or I was going to die. And I hit it and I was still going really fast and it was still sort of icy. And I'm like praying, you know. <laughs> so, oh, I've had many, many, many accidents. That's just, you know, just some. <laughs> so, yeah, crazy. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how I got off on that. Well, thinking about my bike and that honey wagon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Yeah, so tomorrow should be 
it's kind of nice. I mean, 40 is okay for working if you're keeping busy unless you got to use your fingers, you know, like um, nailing or drilling or whatever. So that might be a little different story, but it's supposed to be about 50 um, tomorrow, maybe, I'm thinking. So that's what they said today, but it wasn't. But still better than freezing. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Good tricks, 007. <laughs> yeah, we got to do hangouts sometime, um, people. There's uh, stuff that I would talk to you in hangouts that I'm not going to talk about here. Um, like pointers and tips and different things because... There's people that will um, use what I'm saying and not even talk to me like a human being. It's like, go away, you know. Even if I'm way older than them, it's like, I used to go to a retirement home when I was 12 years old. It started with my, um, I was a campfire girl and it started when I was a bluebird before your campfire girl that we went to the nursing home and we sang with the old people and played bingo with them or read the Bible or the newspaper if they couldn't read, that type of thing. So I started doing that on my own. I would stop at the nursing home called Queens Nursing Home. It was on a street called Queens. So, um, oh, I would do it on the way home from church. That's right. Um, it was on my way home, so I would stop in there, and they were just the most lovely people, you know. I know now that when old people, when people start thinking about dying, sometimes they change their tune, but not always, you know. But yeah, for the most part, um, and then working in a retirement home and stuff, and I don't know. I, I think if people get a certain age, if they don't um, understand kind of the makings of life, then they're way lost, you know. So pretty much they were enjoyable people and very knowledgeable. And, uh, yeah. So when people treat me like a different class citizen for any reason, I don't have time for them. I got their number. Government's got all our numbers. Yeah. And the Satanists got their steak and salad. Don't forget that. You know, that is an important thing. Very important. Every time in these Zionist churches, I mean, I know people know this, but you're drinking wine, eating the body, and drink drinking the blood. You know, this is an important symbolization. Very important. Yeah. The names to everything, like salad bars and, uh, yeah. I mean, the language is important. Just like a steakhouse, like Bonanza. I know it sounds like it's, um, like, from the show. But it means, if you look up the word bonanza, it means, uh, uh, well, well, to feast. So, and just the word feast is a lot of, you two be nice, my kitties. You better be nice. My one boy, he'll come up. He's even being nice to the girl, but she's getting old, so she thinks she can just be a snoot. So she'll growl at him and get him in trouble, and then he's the one that gets yelled at. <laughs> so, Bobby, better be nice. Both of you be nice. Be nice. I'm recording. Do you want people to see you? I'll show you about think I'll show you that. Bobby, come and say hi, YouTube. 
say hi. Say I'm Bob the Bobtail Cat. I think I got him. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah, that's Bob. <laughs> so, he's a character. He's really shy, too. So, yeah. Anyway, I will probably let this go. And um, if I think of something else, I'll get back. But, yeah, I think... Well, I'm not sure the Canary Islands, how many hours we're apart. I will look that up and then we can make like maybe um, um, either midnight for me or it might be noon for Canary Islands for 007. And, um, I don't know. Maybe um, some people, maybe you want to meet up in Hangouts. Maybe we can... Um, I'll set some times, maybe, uh, go over there, say, hey, we're, we're here now. Maybe that's what we should do is get on and, like, I'm heading over to Hangouts, just see if somebody pops up or something, you know? I don't know. I don't really want a lot of people to know that because, um, like I said, if they don't have time for me, I don't have time for them. So, yeah, that's that. Because I do know the playbook because I read it. And I know they weren't playing with me because I could read their minds. My dad was scared to fucking death. He was scared to death of me. So was my mom. They were afraid to piss me off. Even when I was little. So that tells me something. Something was different about me. You know? So anyway. Yeah, I'm a serious person. I always have been. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to make a list of things that I want to let people that I care about know. And, I mean, I figure if somebody's not really talking to me, how could I articulate something to nobody you see what i'm saying or why should i to everybody that'd be almost like telling your enemies hey here's the game plan like they do well see they didn't intend to tell everybody everything but when i started decoding that stuff when i was 12 and i was caught by my dad what are you gonna do you either kill your kid which he tried or make them a part of the whole deal. Well, by then, it became a game almost for both of us and whose mind was stronger. Who could pick each other's brain the worst? Well, they found out who was worse. And I had God on my side. So that made them a little bit fearful. When you try to kill somebody and they're little and you, you don't succeed, and set them up and do this, that, and the next thing, all kinds of things. And I mean, it hurt. Hell yeah, it hurt. That's why I get a little bit angry. I know what they do. It's just like around here. I've been kept, kept up now for enough. Bobby, behave yourself. And he did do that that time. I've been kept up very, very late. Um, one, two o'clock in the morning. Um, and he sleeps late. And then I said, is that going to be like this every night? Because I like to get up in the morning. And it, especially if I have things to do or outside things, it's like you can only do them during the day. And if you're beat, you know, just shot, what are you going to do? You know, so, yeah, it's important. But I've had that all my life, people um, making me sleep deprived. So, and work through it but it isn't good for anybody and it'll take part of my life off me and that's okay you know I signed up for this but I'll tell you what I didn't sign up just to be a nice person to everybody it doesn't go like that in my world or God's and I am I'll 
prove that. You know what? Look up on the internet. There's, and it is, it is on the internet. There's a whole list of things and you will be astounded what this says. I'll look it up for you if you don't have time. But it's a list of things that Jesus said that wasn't so nice. You will not believe it. I was floored how many times in the Bible that Jesus got down on people in the most wicked. Well, what are you supposed to do? Oh, go ahead and kill me and I'm not going to say anything. That's the way they portray him. That's bullshit. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm going to be showing you that. Um, or you can look it up. It really is right under that. I've got on my Facebook page too, buried like way back a few years, a couple years back too. So those people are like, Jesus didn't swear. Oh yeah. Did, oh, you knew him personally. Okay. That's cool. Thanks for telling me. Why don't you go read your Bible now? You know? So yeah, he was a vicious, vicious talker. And those parables, man, they're bone cutting, bone cutting, you know? So, yeah. Oh, and one thing too, Satan hates to be swore at. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that because you're a Christian, right? Well, he can't take your soul. He can't take you to hell for saying a bad word. What's a bad word? This English language that he slanged all up. So um, everybody's living in the Tower of Babel. Maybe, maybe that's a good thing. You know, maybe that's high way back when. <laughs> you know, maybe in heaven they walk around. You know, <laughs> prove it. I don't know. Does anybody else? But we do know what morality is, you know. But yeah, you can be pushed into swearing. That's pretty obvious, you know. And what else are you supposed to do? Pummel somebody? No. So, and you can pray about it. You can cry about it. But that doesn't get it. That doesn't cut it. We all know that. You can go to the gym and pound the heck out of a bag or kick a body bag or whatever. I'll tell you one time I was so mad angry. I was angry. I was fumigating. I had found out I had been lied to one more time. So I took my bat. It's a metal bat. And I went out to the oak tree and I smacked that thing as hard as I could. That was one of the dumbest things I've ever done in my life. But I was so upset. I needed to do something. You know, I had just found out that I had given myself to another liar. So, <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, you can only do that so many times and you just might lose your temper, you know. You might have um, people wanting to kill you only so many times before you say, you know what, I'm really done with this crap. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, I'm going to let you go. I'll say peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA. And um, thank you for joining me. And my favorite people on the internet are the ones doing their daily thing, like walk your dog or whatever you're doing. You know, um, you're my favorite people because um, you're not out to impress anybody. You're just sharing a part of your life. And that's a beautiful thing. And I appreciate it. So, and that was cute, Andrea. Darlings. <laughs> You're a darling, too, to me. So, well, everybody, I do love you. Have a good night, day, whatever. And let's get together and do some talking on um, hangouts. Well, maybe next weekend or something we can. Get together and say hey all right everybody have a good night